Franz Kafka came of age at the turn of the 20th century and went on to become one of its leading writers. His work brings together the everyday and the incredible, inviting the reader to challenge their ideas about human nature, politics, and society. Sadly, Kafka's life was, in many ways, just as haunting as his stories. Kafka was a man who was not a trained philosopher or disciplined writer. Kafka never indicated that he was expressing a deep philosophical theory in his aphorisms. But, when you consider the time, place, and nature of Kafka then you see an existentialist. In this video, we will discuss and explore the philosophy of Franz Kafka. Franz Kafka was born in Prague, in what is now part of the Czech Republic. On 3rd July 1883, Prague was a confused city, much like Kafka himself. With numerous languages and ethnic groups fighting for position in Prague, it was clear in the late 19th century that Jewish residents were quite low in social rank. Kafka was a Czech-born, German-speaking Jewish boy. As he began his career, his social network expanded across the city, and he soon came into contact with its most prominent writers, poets, and actors. Among these were Albert Einstein and Otto Pick, who, like Kafka himself, were both members of Prague's Jewish community. Reading a Kafka short story is like running a race. You find yourself fighting to read, like a passerby trying not to look at a crime scene or accident victim. This absurdity separates Kafka's tales from those writers who tended to teach lessons and dispense justice while Kafka merely taunted his characters. Then they suffered. Having said that Kafka was a great novelist and many scholars regard him as a major contributor to 20th century world literature. His novels are like bad dreams, like they merge realism with fantasy. His novels are celebrated as existential because they emphasize the inner life, the subjective experience of the individual. His stories are also celebrated as ultra-modern because they are atheist and consider the absurd side of life. Because his novels are so deep, also he is often referred to as a philosopher. But he rarely referred to philosophy or philosophers. One corollary to Kafka was Fyodor Dostoevsky, another novelist who emphasized internal life and criticized society. He never called himself a philosopher, yet he is widely cited as one. Perhaps the most famous novel by Kafka was The Trial. The reader easily falls under the spell of the subjectivity of the hero, identifying with him as he faces an absurd pretense of justice. But mysteriously, in the style of many an enigmatic literary figure like Emily Dickinson, Kafka requested that upon his death his unpublished writings be burned and read. Luckily for us, his executor and close friend Max Broad ignored his request, giving the world the trial and other Kafka classics in the process. Thanks to Mr. Max Broad. A much better example of the essence of Kafka's philosophy can be found in his most famous story, The Metamorphosis. The story begins with the legendary opening when Gregor Samsa woke up one morning from unsettling dreams. He found himself changed in his bed into a monstrous vermin. The reason for Gregor's change is never given. It is accepted as an event without explanation. Gregor was presented as a man whose life was taken away by an act of total absurdity. Kafka himself wrote in his journal and letters how the story greatly unsettled him. When one begins to see the implications of the story, its themes about the despairing conditions of Gregor can be extrapolated to implicate Kafka's philosophy on human suffering. By treating Gregor's transformation as a natural phenomenon, he dissects the individual under the predicaments and his surroundings as a means to prove that one is a prisoner of his circumstances. The trial and the metamorphosis have both come to express two philosophical dissertations on Kafka's interpretations on the conditions of modernity. The trial uses concepts such as the law and truth as a means to explore how an individual is bound to them as a prisoner for the rest of his life, and the metamorphosis is an exploration into how circumstances turn an individual into a prisoner without his consent. Pessimism and an uncomfortable reality is what best characterizes Kafka's stories. His philosophy on the purpose of human existence is faithful to the ideas of existentialism. Man is a fragile entity of insignificant possibilities. In the face of such truth, Kafka fails to provide a solution other than to accept the conditions presented. What else is left in the face of nothing? Kafka was also thoroughly familiar with the writings of Kierkegaard, and it pays to ponder the similarities and differences between their respective views. The most obvious similarity between Kafka and Kierkegaard, their complex relationships with their respective fiancés and their failures to marry, also points up an essential difference between them. When Kafka talks of bachelorhood and a hermit's existence, he sees these as negative. Kierkegaard, on the other hand, was an enthusiastic bachelor who saw a divine commandment in his renunciation of women. For Kafka, 
Bachelorhood was a symbol of alienation from communal happiness, and he thought of all individualism in this manner. This makes him a poor existentialist. Kafka's philosophical basis is an open system. It is one of human experiences about the world, and not so much the particular of a thinker. Kafka uses his writing as a code of the transcendental, a language of the unknown. It is important to understand that this code is not an escape from reality, but the exact opposite the instrument through which he seeks to comprehend the world in its totality without ever being able to say to what extent he may have succeeded. The term Kafkaesque, derived from the last name of Franz Kafka, refers to any situation which is a mysterious and unexpected dreamlike departure from reality. The kind of thing that makes you say, this just can't be happening, except it is. This is the framework Kafka used to explore social and political issues in early 20th century Europe, though we can even get more specific. Kafka describes, as the Oxford dictionaries would put it, oppressive or nightmarish qualities, or having a nightmarishly complex, bizarre, or illogical quality. Kafka biographer Frederick R. Carl defined the term this way. What's Kafkaesque is when you enter a surreal world in which all your control patterns, all your plans, the whole way in which you have configured your own behavior, begins to fall to pieces. When you find yourself against a force that does not lend itself to the way you perceive the world, you don't give up, you don't lie down and die. What you do is struggle against this with all of your equipment, with whatever you have. But of course you don't stand a chance. That's Kafkaesque. In a nutshell, you don't give up, you don't lie down and die. What you do is struggle against this with all of your equipment, with whatever you have. But of course you don't stand a chance. That is the philosophy of Franz Kafka.